Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today I just wanted to do a little video highlighting um, an entire family of uh, products, which are actually kind of rare. Uh, well, rare in the sense that there's not a lot of choice, and actually not many stores carry them, but big freaking GPU custom air coolers, like the Rage Intec Morpheus 2 I have here, or, uh, you know, the Arctic Acelero, and uh, uh, Arctic has a series of big custom air coolers like this. And uh, Prolima Tech has the Mark 26, I think it's called. Um, and yeah, ba basically those are the, well, Thermal Right used to do one. Um, and I can't think of any other ones that, that exist, but these are awesome. Okay, I really wish there was more choice in these because these are really, really cool. And the reason why I think these are really, really cool is uh, you basically get AIO level cooling in a air cooler package. So there's no, you know, clunky radiator to deal with. There's no water running through the damn thing. Um, no, no worries about hooking up fan, uh, uh, you know, pumps, but those are really minor things for me. Mostly it's just the radiator because I, and the mounting, uh, mounting situation. These things are really, really easy to put together and take apart. Um, and that makes it really easy for me when I'm working on a card, like modifying a card and testing it um, to just run it with the air cooler because this is super convenient. Like I, I, if, I, if I have a card where I'm lucky enough that the voltage controller is on the back of the PCB, I don't even need to take the damn thing apart and I can work on it because, well, other than the fact that, you know, that <laughs> you, you can bend the PCB if you put too much force down on it, it's it's good to work on because I have access to everything. Whereas if you have a card with an AIO on it, which like from the from working with the Fury X is it's just like, well, um, the radi I want to turn the card around and now the radiator is hanging off of the desk and I can't like, it's just super inconvenient. So you know you need to like oftentimes it's just like okay well you end up working in angles that aren't great. And uh, whereas with these big air coolers that's not really an issue. And the thermal performance of these things is awesome. Like, seriously. Uh, this held the GTX 480 at 45 degrees when I was testing it on air cooling. And I had it over 900 megahertz core with some over voltage. Not a ton, but some over voltage nonetheless. And we all know how power hungry a GTX 480 is out of the box. Now, admittedly, I had the 480 delitted, but still, that's a really good result in terms of cooling. Uh, other than that, you know, I've used it on Vega. On Vega, it's been great. On uh, I've recently been using it on the H on a HD five eight seventy. I'm running like one point four volts into the HD five eight seventy, and it's not even going past fifty degrees centigrade for three D Mark Vantage, which is just okay. That's the ambulance. Ambulance is gone. I don't think they picked up on the mic too much, but anyway. Um... Yeah, on the on the Vega, it's uh, also again ridiculously impressive. It's not as good as if you know, say the. Actually, I'm not sure how the AIO Vega run, how cold the AIO Vega runs, but uh, like even there, like this thing does an excellent job. So you get a lot of cooling performance in a really convenient setup. Now there are some downsides. It is two and a half slots, so there is no way you're running this in a four-way configuration without reusing risers and some kind of custom mounting situate, uh, some kind of custom mounting solution for all of your cards. Uh, other downsides include, well, you can run three-way, but you're not fitting a fan on there because, uh, well, not a full-sized one anyway, because now it's four and a half, because um, a fan is roughly about a slot. Actually, a fan is a bit more than a slot, so yeah, it's like four and three quarters. So that's not great, is it? But uh, you can run two-way with full-size fans on these and it'll give you absolutely ridiculous cooling performance and I do want to test that. Um, I might end up running both of the, uh, my Furies on, on this air cooler because this does actually fit on a Fury card. Um, so the mounting support on these is actually really flexible. Basically, this will fit on... Um, well, it's listed on here. If you just look these up, you'll see that these have really flexible mounting support. So... You know, if you're one of those people who bench, uh, like, like if, again, really? Anyway, if you're one of the people who bench, um, uh, you know, bench older hardware and you buy a lot of cards with crappy reference coolers, 
these are great because there's a pretty good chance that if you're buying high-end cards like 5870s, 5850s, 6970s, 6950s, 7890s, uh, 790s, 7950s, 280Xs, 280s, 390, uh, uh, 390s, 290s, 290Xs, uh, GTX 680s, 580s, 480s, 780s, 780Ti's, 980s, 980 Ti's, uh, Titans, uh, you get the idea. There's just, these fit on so many cards, especially the big ones, and those run hot. And these provide a lot of cooling, and they're really cheap too. Um, you know, the, the Morpheus, I got this for, I think, 55 quid. Um, so, yeah, and I think in the US it costs about $55. So these things aren't really that expensive. Admittedly, you do need to get your own fans for it, but uh, it really doesn't cost that much, and it gives you a lot of cooling performance. And if you're, you know, working on older cards for purposes of benchmarking them for HW bot, super convenient. Like, this is way more convenient than any kind of AIO setup. Now, there are some downsides. VRAM cooling suffers quite badly, um, unless you... You know, un unless you're uh, ready to deal with all the hassle of uh, thermal tape, which I'm not. I can't stand thermal tape. You know, it's just awful. Like, like I hate thermal tape, so there's no way I'm running this with thermal tape. Um, I'm not thermal taping VRAM heat sinks to cards I want to eventually run on LN2 because getting the heat sinks back off again can be quite a like quite an adventure, and I'm not looking for that. I, I just want a convenient way to test my card before it goes on LN2. So uh, in some cases, if you have a card which has VRAM that is particularly temperature sensitive, which does exist, like VRAM is good up to 95 degrees uh, in terms of operating, but in terms of overclocking performance, there are some memory chips out there which at say 25 degrees, they'll clock a lot better than at 95. So in those situations, the, the, the lack of VRAM cooling can be really annoying. If your VRM is weak, um, VRM cooling is a bit of an issue as well because uh, these heat sinks do come with like a whole bunch of uh, like, like they come with a whole bunch of, you know, tape and uh, heat sink blocks that you can use for your VRMs. It's just the same issue if this card is going on LN2, or if you're testing multiple cards, you're gonna run out of these, right? And uh, you're gonna need to like source more of them and it's just, again, an inconvenience um, because it's not like you can just pull the VRM heat sinks on and off and that kind of thing. Now, admittedly, if you're on a card with a strong VRM on air cooling, you're not gonna really be able to push enough voltage to harm the VRM before the core gets blown to pieces. Or, and, and the other thing is, if you were just running benchmark tests, then a lot of benchmarks will finish before the VRM gets too hot. So, you don't have to worry about it too much there. But if you're going for a permanent solution, well, if you're going for a permanent installation, you know, if you're, like, running this in your daily system, like, say you bought a, uh, well, you bought a reference card, and you really regret it because the cooler sucks, um, you're... You, you can buy one of these and just use the uh, use the thermal tape because then the thermal tape coming on, like being hard to remove is not an issue. Um, you just do have to be kind of careful with like getting everything to stick and sit properly and uh, um, it, it can be a bit involved in terms of that. I chose the worst time to record, didn't I? Anyway, um, these... Uh, yeah, so basically, I really like these. The only downsides are just VRM cooling and VRAM cooling are kind of awkward. The stock mounting hardware for the Morpheus 2, in my opinion, is just, uh, like, it's really, like, it gets you really good mounting pressure. It's very consistent. There's no risk to you breaking your card. It also takes forever to actually, like, it's much more, it's a much less convenient uh, mounting hardware uh, s setup. Like, it's... It, you know, it's more secure, it's more safe and secure once it's on the card and fully tightens down. But, um, as you can clearly see, I replaced it with just some M2.5 screws going from the heatsink all the way, you know, M2.5 screws going through through the card. Because with these, I just throw a nut on these and just tighten that down. And I, I don't need to worry about aligning the mounting bracket with uh, mounting holes in the heatsink and then pushing screws through all of that, that at the same time as like overcoming the spring load on them because that's the stock mounting hardware, right? It comes with these guys, which is just, uh, that's super inconvenient. Um, so again, yeah, so I basically just switched over to this mounting hardware method. 
Now, the downside to this is that you can over tighten this and break the card. But it's, uh, but you know, if you're like, if you know about that and you're not being stupid about installing the heatsink, then uh, that's a relatively low risk. Like, I've not actually broken a card doing this yet, so I'm not worried about it. And uh, yeah, so I like these things and I just figured I'd highlight them to you because uh, these are really cool. And I kind of wish there was more options on the market because uh, like, I really think um, these could run cooler potentially, mainly because like, see this, that fan overhangs that fin stack quite significantly. I'm pretty sure if they just made that fin stack bigger, it could run cooler. And uh, going even further, I think the fin stack could take up more space like, uh, you know, have more depth in some areas, like over the core, I think it could definitely have more depth, uh, or perhaps have fins coming out of the core block there, maybe, I don't know, um, I'm, I'm not a heatsink designer, I'm just thinking of ways to add more thermal, uh, like more surface area, um, figure out how to get more heat pipes into this thing, uh, like, th th these could, I think, like, I'd be really, if there was like a a $75 option, which would be like 50% more expensive than this one, and it ran five degree, these degrees cooler, I would buy that. <laughs> or even two degrees cooler, I would still buy that. Because just more cooling is more better. Um, and, I, and I really wish there was more options for these, because right now, most of these perform about the same. Um, but they are really, really nice, in my opinion. Like, they are, like, already they're really, really nice, and they give you really good thermal performance for your GPU core. Your VRAM and VRM is a kind of, uh, like, that. You, you might need to do some uh, problem solving there yourself. Um, but, yeah, these things are awesome, and I love these. And so I figured I'd just do a video highlighting these because I use this thing a lot, um, and I don't really want to talk about how much I love the air cooler every time I talk about some card I'm working on with this giant air cooler. So I figured I would just do a video focusing on the air cooler alone. Uh, and yeah, th these are definitely, like, these are actually potentially a really good value proposition if you're in the mark, like, if you're one of those people that wants to rush out and buy a card reference. Because say, um, say you bought one of these for your 7970, right? You buy a reference 7970, well, the Morpheus 2 will actually fit a 290X, it'll fit a Fury, and it'll fit a Vega. Um, now, admittedly, at the time that the 7970 was relevant, this would not have come with mounting hardware for Vega, because there was no card before the 7970 with mounting spacing like Vega does. But uh, uh, if you bought this for your Fury, which you could, you could have bought this for a Fury, um, you could now run it on a Vega card. So these do have some amount of longevity to them. And if you bought this for a 7970, you could totally run it on a Polaris card. So yeah, the, these, uh, you know, they have some good longevity in them. You can recycle them for multiple cards. And so if you're running it even in your daily system, this is a really good way to basically be able to run rush out at launch, buy the garbage cooled reference card and still not suffer the noise of a blower heatsink because you actually have a proper heatsink that'll fit the card out of the box. Um, so yeah, these are really cool. I like these. I kind of wish I had a reason to use it in my, I like, ha had a reason to use one of these in my daily system, just as a kind of like, look, look at what cool, what cool junk I have in my daily system. Um, Cause I do actually like kind of want to turn the daily system into something that has a, what do we, like, I, I don't really want to go all crazy with, like, modifying it, modding the case and putting in, like, a, a water loop or something. But I, I would really like to have, like, the ultimate air-cooled setup kind of situation going on. Which, now that I think about it, it might be possible if you use, like, a... Because uh, there's now Vega cards with the short PCB, but, oh, no, they come with good air coolers to start with. That's unfortunate. I need to find, with find, like... Like, I, I do actually want to test that on a Fury, though, with uh, with the overhang here. Slot a fan between the cards. That that could work really well. Um, but, yeah, these, these things are cool. I wish I had a reason to use it in my daily system. Because uh, th th this is a, like, these are really cool parts, in my opinion. And uh, I wish more of them existed. Uh, maybe in orange. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, 
So big custom air coolers. Just figured they'd be kind of interesting to talk about because they are really, really cool um, in terms of performance. And uh, I love them. So I figured I'd point them, point them out to people because they are uh, a good alternative to like AIO uh, hitting your card with an AIO or a custom water block. Though admittedly the VRM and VRAM uh, heatsink situation is a bit work is well no if you're if you're looking at an AIO it's just as bad in terms of VRM and v VRAM cooling but if you're looking at like a full cover water block it's actually worse because a full cover water block takes care of that up for you um, however a full cover water block also costs about twice as much as this does so you know there, there's trade offs to every side and I personally think. Um, for non-water loop situations, this is way more convenient. Just way, way more convenient and really good performance and value. So yeah, that's it for the video for real this time. So thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave those as well or suggestions. And uh, if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, then I have a Patreon and PayPal and uh, Patreon and PayPal, there's shirts you could buy, and there's also, I'm getting rid of my X99 UD4P, so you can go pick that up on the a, uh, the AHOC junkyard, and uh, there's also um, a B350 board that I'm getting rid of, so you can go check that out, and links to all of that, well, no, a single link to all of those things is down in the description, um, and yeah, so that's it for the video, thank you for watching. And see you next time. Ah, <clears throat> my voice dropped out for some reason. Anyway, where's the stop button? There it is.